This upcoming Tesla feature could save your life. Let's talk about it. I'm Jonathan and welcome to CleanerWatt. This video is made possible by the wonderful Patreon supporters who support me every month and are a part of the CleanerWatt community. If you'd like to find out more and learn how you can support my work, I'll put a link to the Patreon community in the description below. Sandy Monroe recently had a one-on-one -on -one interview with Elon Musk. During this interview, they mainly discussed manufacturing. However, Sandy Moreau also gave his opinions of full self-driving and the beta release. This will save more lives than airbags, seatbelts, and anything else that anybody's ever gotten. And Elon Musk responded with, that's absolutely correct. Now in just a minute, we'll talk about the full self-driving beta release, when we should expect that and its impact and how that will save lives. But before we do that, I wanna step back just for a minute and talk about the different safety features that are built into vehicles. When it comes to the safety features built into a vehicle, there are active safety features and passive safety features. Active features are the Advanced Driver's Assistance Systems or ADAS systems, which work to prevent an accident, Seat belts, airbags, and the structure of the vehicle fall under the passive heading to help prevent or reduce injury in the event of an accident. In the year 1968, seat belts became mandatory in all vehicles sold in the United States. So to figure out if seat belts actually had an impact on the number of people that have died in car wrecks, I pulled up data from Wikipedia and started with 1968 and the crash data and the fatalities for those years. As you can see on this chart, in 1968, there were over 52,000 deaths because of automobile accidents. Obviously, population has changed and increased over the years, so the important numbers are the fatalities per 100 million miles and the fatalities per 100K population. As you can see, over the years, the change in per capita fatalities went up and down over the years, but from 1968 to 1978, the overall numbers did decrease during that period of time. So obviously seatbelts alone were not responsible for this decrease, but it does appear like they had some impact and they did reduce some deaths in automobile accidents. On September 1st, 1998, a law went into effect in the United States that required that all cars and light trucks have airbags on both sides of the front seat. And once again, looking at the crash and fatality data from Wikipedia, as you can see in 1998, moving to 2008, there was a serious reduction in the fatalities per 100 million miles driven and the fatalities per 100K in population. Now, once again, it's hard to actually pinpoint how many of these lives were saved because of airbags and how many were saved because of other safety and structural features in the car. But as you can see, these two safety features, I believe, have saved a number of lives over the years. Some of the passive safety features that Tesla has built into their vehicles, like the Model Y, include front impact protection zones, crumple zones, rigid structure, and also a battery pack providing a low center of gravity. When it comes to the effectiveness of the structure of Tesla's vehicles in protecting the passenger, according to NHTSA data, Tesla's vehicles, the Model 3, S, and X, have the lowest probability of injury of any vehicle they've tested since 2011. Tesla's vehicles also have a very extreme low risk of rollover. As I've mentioned in past videos, vehicles rolling over account for a good percentage of fatalities in vehicles, so if you can prevent this, this makes a huge difference and helps save a lot of lives. So that NHTSA data talks about the passive safety features, what about the effectiveness of Tesla's active safety features, autopilot, and the driver's assist features? Currently included with every Tesla vehicle with a base price, you get automatic steering on the highway, that's autopilot on the highway, automatic emergency braking, forward collision warning, adaptive cruise control, and also lane keep assist and lane support. On paper, this appears to be very similar to what a lot of other manufacturers offer with their safety assist driver systems as well. However, when you move beyond just a feature list and actually look at the effectiveness of these features and how many accidents they actually help prevent, the Euro NCAP is a great source for that data. 
According to the Euro NCAP's 2020 testing, the BMW 3 Series achieved a safety backup, which is their safety assist score of 90%. The Mercedes-Benz GLE achieved a score of 89%. The Volkswagen ID3 a score of 88%. The Audi Q8, 84%. And the Tesla Model 3 a score of 95%. So as you can see, when it comes to the effectiveness of Tesla's safety features, this 95% score is higher than all the rest. However, the Euro NCAP did dock Tesla on their total score because, quote, the Tesla Model 3 excels in the level of vehicle assistance, but fails to balance that high level of support with a similar level of driver engagement, leading to possible over-reliance. So really what the Euro NCAP is saying is Tesla's system works extremely well and better than the rest, However, it doesn't have very good driver monitoring features, so there is a potential for someone driving a Tesla vehicle to become too over-reliant on the system because most of the time it does the right thing. And if you become too over-reliant on it, you could not pay attention as much as you should and get into an accident. Now the question is, why doesn't Tesla have more advanced driver monitoring solutions? I believe the answer lies in the fact that Tesla's full self-driving full release is coming in the near future, and Tesla doesn't want to allocate a lot of resources towards fixing a problem that will be solved by full self-driving in the near future. So Tesla is already top of the pack when it comes to active safety in their vehicles and passive safety in their vehicles. And when full self-driving is out of the beta release and reaches a more full wide release, Tesla will be even further ahead. As we mentioned and compared, a lot of other companies have safety features built into their vehicles. However, when it comes to full self-driving that Tesla is working on and releasing in beta form, they are way ahead of the pack and appear to be the leaders in that area. When you pay the extra $10,000 for the full self-driving features, you currently get Navigate on Autopilot, which works on the highway, and auto lane changes on the highway. You get Smart Summon, Auto Park, Traffic Light and Stop Sign Control, and right now they have a beta release of the automatic driving on city streets, and in the future this will roll out for level 4, level 5 full self-driving for the entire Tesla fleet with the proper hardware. Now the question is, how many lives potentially can be saved by Tesla's full self-driving? According to Tesla's Q4 2020 safety report, with autopilot engaged, Tesla only recorded one accident for every 3.45 million miles driven. Without autopilot engaged and just these safety assist features, Tesla registered one accident for every 2.05 million miles. This compares to the NHTSA national average of one accident for every 484,000 miles driven. Tesla's autopilot system as it functions on the highway is already very effective, and I believe we'll see very similar and maybe even better results for the auto steer on city streets. After all, the best way to prevent a fatality is to prevent an accident altogether. According to the IIHS in 2018, even with all the safety features that we've talked about in vehicles, airbags, seatbelts, etc., they still registered 33,000 plus fatal motor vehicle crashes in the United States. This is a huge problem that I believe needs to be solved, and Tesla's full self-driving, I believe, will make a dent in these fatalities and help reduce this. Now the good news is, we'll talk about in a minute where Tesla is and rolling it out, but the good news is Elon Musk mentioned on the Tesla recent conference call that Tesla will be willing to license out their autopilot full self-driving software to other manufacturers. So when Tesla solves this, it will benefit other people as well, and Tesla will be able to spread this life-saving feature to a broader population. I think we're very open to licensing our software to to third parties, um, and we've had some um, preliminary discussions about licensing autopilot to other OEMs. So uh, this is something we're, we're more than happy to do. Um, and you know, but I think obviously, we, like we need to probably do a little bit more work to prove that Tesla autopilot is capable of full self-driving, um, which I, I, guess I think will become obvious later this year. Uh, and then we're more than happy to. I license that to other car companies. We're definitely not trying to keep it uh, to be a Tesla exclusive situation. 
Now, moving back to the Sandy Monroe interview of Elon Musk, he had these things to say about his experience with full self-driving beta. Quote, my voice went up about three octaves. I was so excited. I've never seen anything, never ever seen anything quite like what you've got in the new self-driving thing. This is just absolutely brilliant. This should get into the marketplace as fast as possible. It's accurate. It's much more accurate than what we have in the Model 3. It's kind of aggressive because if there's a hole, it'll find that hole. It makes left-hand turns, which I have heard from everybody, can't be done. I was so impressed, I couldn't believe it. I want the rest of the world to know what the new standard is. So the question is, when will Tesla roll out full self-driving for the entire Tesla fleet? Here's what Elon Musk had to say about this recently in the Q4 2020 investors conference call. Then with regard to full self-driving, um, we've made massive progress on full self-driving. If I recommend watching the videos of our uh, a public beta. So we've got, I think, almost a thousand people in the, in the beta at this point. And uh, it, with each successive release of the beta of the FSD software, it just gets, it's really improving, improving uh, rapidly. Uh, it's now, it's not very common for, um, you know, I, I drive the latest builds. It's very common for me to um, have no intervention uh, on drives that I do, including drives to places I've never been to. So these, these are not pre-planned routes. They're Cars, the car's never been there before, and uh, it's now actually more more. It, it, it's more common than not for the car to have no intervention, even on a complex drive. So, uh, and and this is like basically, I'm highly confident the car will be able to drive itself with the reliability in excess of human this year. So in conclusion, whether you believe that Tesla will reach level four or level five autonomy in 2021 or not. The truth is, once Tesla does get there, it should save hundreds of thousands of lives and prevent millions of injuries and accidents. It will be one of the greatest safety innovations ever released. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and that you learned something as well. If you're not already subscribed to this channel, please consider subscribing. And if you do subscribe, if you click the bell icon, you'll be notified when new videos are published. Also, if you did like the video, please consider clicking the like button because that helps other people find the video as well. I also want to take a moment here at the end of the video to thank the Patreon supporters who support me every month and help make this content possible. A special thank you to my performance supporters and the other supporters listed on the screen. Thank you so much.